Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina, but today I am dressed slightly differently. I was going for a Morticia Adams look, but uh, I wore that actually yesterday at Trivia because we had a, we, well, we dressed up for Trivia because it was Halloween Trivia, and my costume was a bit more Morticia Adams-y. I had a, a black dress on, which is more style, and this wig, because it was darker in the pub, <laughs> was was more accurate. This The gray really came out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's where I got some Walmart for the $10, okay? Anyway, so this is one of those, if you liked this, read that videos, except this is about movies and books. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to list off the thing I think is more well known. For example, if you liked this movie, then you should read this book. Or if you've read this book, then you should watch this movie. Because uh, Halloween for me is all about movies and it's all about books as well, because that's my whole life. So here we go. Uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed the, uh, I think it's the early 2000s movie Ginger Snaps, which is a werewolf movie about sisterly bonding, <laughs> then you will probably enjoy the folk horror Smother Moss. It just came out a few months ago. I reviewed it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, both are terse and have a paranormal aspect, although the paranormal aspect is quite different. And while they do kind of go in a different direction entirely in terms of like theme, there is the big theme of sisterly bonding and both have a dark brooding atmosphere. So if you've read any folk horror really and you want something that's kind of small town, kind of more creepy with a big kind of scary part <laughs> near the end, then you should check out either of these things. Ginger Snaps is really good. I believe it's Canadian and uh, it's, it's a really good movie. If you enjoyed the movie The Ritual, which is about a bunch of dudes going into the wilderness and a bunch of weird stuff happens, then you should check out The Dark Between the Trees, which is about all women going into the wilderness and weird stuff starting to happen. Both are really, really good wilderness survival horror. Uh, of course, they have different endings, different kind of motivations, but both have that kind of lurking, something's following us in the trees, kind of a Blair Witch aspect to it. And uh, yeah, so if you liked Blair Witch, actually check out both of these things, The Dark Between the Trees and The Ritual because similar kind of vibe uh yeah uh so if you liked the book the terror <laughs> which is a historical fiction horror you would think that i would say watch terror the show which is also really good which i also really liked but i'm actually going to recommend you reading watching the cursed it just came out a couple years ago it's also historical fiction horror which is my favorite type of horror in terms of movie horror uh but it also has a similar kind of paranormal monster aspect to it that the terror does, as well as a very big humans or dicks aspect, which <laughs> I think is also an important theme of the story. So yeah, if you like the terror show or the terror movie, then check out The Cursed because it was really good. And uh, I actually have not read the terror book. I have it. It's on my TBR. Uh, but apparently it's quite similar to the show. So I've been waiting a few years to kind of forget the show so I can read the book. Also, it's, it's big. So I'm planning to read it on like a vacation sometime. <laughs> so if you like slashers, slasher movies, then you definitely need to check out the book My Heart is a Chainsaw. It is an homage to horror slasher. Uh, you can also check out, uh, on top of the big ones, like, you know, the Jason and the Michael Myers and all that, check out Terror Train, which was, I just watched that a few weeks ago, and it was really good. I was surprised, actually, at how good it was uh, in terms of not having all the stuff that I don't like about horror <laughs> from the 80s and 70s. Check out Hell Knight as well. That one's really fun and Bay of Blood. All of these movies, I think, are actually referenced in uh, the um, Lake Lake Witch, right? The Lake Witch trilogy, which is My Heart is a Chainsaw is the first one of that. And the whole trilogy is really, really good. If you love, if you love slashers, you should totally check those books out. They're so good. If you liked the book Feed or any kind of zombie book, then you really should watch any zombie movie. This is a pretty... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty, I don't even know why I'm including this one because obviously, but uh, if you have not watched Reanimator, <laughs> which is an older one, I'm going to talk a lot about classic horror movies here. You should totally check it out. It is a wild ride. Uh, if you are younger, do not watch it with your parents because there is a scene that, that yeah, might be a bit kind of awkward depending on... Um, what your relationship with your parents is like in terms of flex scenes. Anyway, um, any Jeffrey Combs movies from the 80s, honestly, has this weird vibe to it. And you should totally like check those out. <laughs> uh, the Shining, if you like the book The Shining, you should watch the movie The Shining. That's all I'm going to say. 
<laughs> I uh, I am one of those weird people that um, absolutely loves The Shining book. It was the first book that got me into horror when I was younger. Uh, but I also really, really enjoy the Kubrick um, version of the movie. I think that they both address different things and they both take some, uh, and Kubrick does take some creative liberties that I think was interesting. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, no, The Shining is a classic. It's like what I watch at Christmas, actually. <laughs> Now, if you like the movie The Thing, because who doesn't like The Thing, uh, you should check out The Hollows by Daniel Church. It has a similar kind of setting, not that it's like a remote middle, well, it is remote, it is in the middle of nowhere, and there's a big snowstorm. So basically it's kind of the similar concept as The Thing. Uh, you have a small kind of crew of people trying to survive something that's very, not aliens, but it's um very kind of monster-like. There's also a huge kind of human element to that story too that doesn't really have to tie into the thing, but the cold and the paranormal, all of that really tie in well. So if you liked the movie The Witch, or if you liked Rosemary's Baby, a, a nice little marriage between the two would be Don't Eat the Pie. <laughs> this book just came out uh, actually in October, and this book is about a woman and a daughter, a woman and her daughter, and they travel to this, this island um, in the south, and um, there's some witchy stuff going on here, and the cover is just so much fun, so you should totally check that one out. Uh, so when it comes to ghost movies. I really like ghost movies. A classic one that you should check out is The Changeling. Not the one with Angelina Jolie, that's something else. No, this one's from like the 70s or 80s and it's a classic ghost story. Also, The Others. I really like The Others. <laughs> it is creepy and I mean the, the, it, it's kind of a classic now. I think it came out with the early 2000s. If you liked those, there's a, there's a movie, sorry, if you liked those, there is a book called Nyctophobia, which is a client, kind of a classic ghost story novel. And if you can find it somewhere, I stumbled across it at a huge book sale one time. And while it wasn't like my favorite book of all time, I thought it was really good and had a really good creepiness to it. So if you can get a hold of that, it's a pretty kind of classic ghost story. If you have read the recent book, My Darling Dreadful Thing, then you should watch the movie Cemetery Man. <laughs> if you have seen Cemetery Man, then you should totally check out My Darling Dreadful Thing. Uh, both of these books have, or both of these forms of media have very, very weird vibes. And uh, the weird vibes are, they're just weird. And, um, but great. <laughs> now, Dracula obviously a classic. Obviously you should read Dracula. Uh, it's very engaging. It's also really fun if you think that, so Coca-Cola, the drink, was invented actually before Dracula came out. So if you picture in your mind, you know, Renfield or um, Van Helsing sitting around kind of chugging a Coke in the background, it's very entertaining. <laughs> Now, in terms of Dracula adaptations, uh, the Gary Oldman version is my absolute favorite because, I mean, it's sexy. Uh, but to be honest, if you have not checked out Renfield, which is a Nicolas Cage movie, <laughs> it's on Prime, I think, it is really, really funny. It's very, uh, like, you know, over the top. It, okay, it's, it's, it's very over the top. It's not really scary. It's more just kind of ridiculous and fun. It's more of a dark comedy, but I, I thought it was great. I absolutely loved it. So totally, totally check that out. And if you haven't read Dracula, again, just read Dracula. It's, it's, it's very easy to read. It's all told in like mixed media. So you've got letters and you've got um, diaries and things like that. So it's very approachable in this day and age. It doesn't read, it's not dry and boring like some books from back then. Not like I find them dry and boring, but I know a lot of people do. <laughs> now, if you liked the movie Tremors, because of course you do. Tremors is amazing. And Tremors too. I, I, I absolutely love Tremors too. You know how many times my husband and I say the worms have turned to one another? I don't know why, but for some reason that phrase comes up a lot in our lives and I say it all the time. Uh, so if you like Tremors, you should also check out the, I think it's late seventies movie, The Deadly Spawn. <laughs> This movie is wild. It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty basic in terms of plot, but the animatronics are fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. And if you liked those two movies, I'm going to be a bit of a pitch here because the book's not out yet and I'm affiliated with the author. So it's kind of like a little pitch for them, but there's a book coming out in March called Nameless Things. It's got the worm aspect to it. It's also survival horror. It's very fun. Uh, yeah, if you're a reviewer um, and you want a copy, let me know. I can hook you up with an arc for sure. So yeah, it's really cool. It's like these guys and they run into some other people and they're trapped in this canyon in Colorado and uh, they're being attacked by uh, first they're small worms and then, yeah, anyway. 
Uh, so if you have watched Pan's Labyrinth, uh, if you haven't watched this yet, what are you waiting for? It's absolutely fantastic. Then you should check out the book Alice, which is another kind of fairy tale esque story. So it's based on Alice in Wonderland, but it's messed up. I reviewed it actually, I think this time last year. I really enjoyed it uh, as much as you can enjoy something that puts your heart in your throat the whole time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you should totally check that out. So if you liked anything to do with werewolves, you know, what is it? American werewolf in Paris or American werewolf in the UK? I can't remember. I've seen them all, but I can't remember. Any of the Howling movies, except maybe um, the Howling, the one with the marsupials. Uh, <laughs> if any, you know, Dog Soldiers, that's a good one too. If you like any kind of werewolf movie and you kind of like a more, uh, and you want something different in your life, you should check out Sharp Teeth by Toby Barlow. This is a epic poem about werewolves. I mean, they're not really werewolves. They're more like human dog shapeshifters, but it's really, really interesting and really intense. I read the book about 25, 20 years ago, I guess. I think I was like 18 when I found it and I have never stopped thinking about it. So highly recommend it if you can find a copy of it. If you enjoyed House of Leaves, then I think a comparable book in terms of uncanny feeling is The Fly, the, the one with Jeff Goldblum. I might be the only one that <clears throat> is kind of disturbed by this movie, but it's Cronenberg and the way that he transforms into the fly creeps me out. It grosses me out. I don't know. I can watch a lot of horror movies and not get grossed out, but for some reason the fly just gives me an ugh kind of feeling. Uh, also, if you love Cronenberg, check out The Brood. It's pretty basic and kind of, kind of slow until the last like 10 minutes and then you're like, what the anyway uh okay so uh that's kind of all I've got really because I'm kind of doing this at the top of my head because <laughs> I'm doing this last minute but if uh some honorable mention movies if you don't know what to watch tonight at Halloween after you're done you know giving out candy or going out for candy depending how old you are or if you have children to take out <laughs> and you're sick of Jason and Freddy and all of those bad boys uh check out Evil Dead the original if you haven't, um, cause I don't know how, I honestly don't know how young people are who are watching my channel. I imagine you're quite old, so you're probably like, I've seen Evil Dead a billion times, but if you have not, the first Evil Dead movie is so much fun. It's such a blast. Uh, definitely check that out. The remake's pretty good too, in terms of just like a straight up kind of gory horror, but the original is just so fun. Also check out The Frighteners. This movie was a staple of my childhood. I actually have the book. I found it here to show you it. <laughs> The book's terrible. Don't read the book. Go watch the movie. It's it's really, really fun. And Jeffrey Combs is in it again. I love Jeffrey Combs. Uh, yeah, Michael J. Fox. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's got a lot of stuff. It's got some creepy stuff. It's got some funny stuff. It's got some weird stuff. It's got everything you want. I recommend checking out Sleepy Hollow, the Tim Burton version, um, because it's like one of the most subdued Tim Burton movies in terms of like his style, I would say. It still has like his style to it and little bits here and there, but I think it's one of the ones you could say is like least Tim Burton-y and it's got some good gore in it. It's got some good, um, some good Christopher Walken in it. <laughs> I really like it. I saw the theaters when I was a, so it might be nostalgic for me because I, I, I loved it when I was like younger, um, but no, totally it's fun. 30 Days of Night is great if you're looking for a vampire movie. It's got some action in it. Uh, it's it's cool. It's like it's in the one of the towns in Alaska where it's night all the time. And so the vampires are like, this is perfect. And they descend on the town. It's good. And lastly, you should check out The Faculty. Uh, this was, again, like Sleepy Hollow, like The Frighteners, a staple of my growing up. I think most people who are around my age, like late 30s, loved The Faculty. It was, at its time, it was pretty innovative in terms of the CGI was quite good. It was a smart, sexy horror movie that wasn't too gory. Uh, it was, it plays with the tropes a bit. I really like the faculty. I think it's great. And uh, it's also Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So it kind of, you know, leans back into the old, uh, the old movie classics there, which I also love. Uh, yeah. So let me know in the comments what your favorite horror movie was. Let me know in the comments what your favorite horror book is, because I definitely need some more horror books to read. I read a lot of horror when I was younger, like my teens. And then I kind of stopped for like a good, like 10 years. I didn't read a ton of horror. And now I'm kind of like finally like getting way more into it. Uh, yeah. So I definitely want some more recommendations. Um, yeah. And, uh, happy Halloween. <laughs>